Put my phone one right here. Yeah. The table wouldn't be good enough for you? Yeah, I could, but then I have to like come up here and see it versus just like glancing over it. Oh, well. I could put this back. You know, we do have somebody who keeps time. Yeah, but then... Um, but then you'd have to look at numbers. I, I, I don't know. You, you pay your money, you take your chances. If it ends up, you know, you're paying for one distraction or another. All right. it's, it's your choice. <clears throat> so, uh, gun control is something that varies greatly from state to state. And California is one of the least safe, safe states in the country because of our gun bans. Um, these, there, I'm going to outline three different situations where it would be helpful if these bans were lifted. Uh, the first one being uh, the event of a tyrannical government. The second one being your personal safety, meaning yourself, your family, your peers. And the third one being uh, the safety of the state as a whole, uh, because having those guns is a deterrent. Um, the Second Amendment was created because we had to escape Great Britain. And the first thing they did when we started to rebel was ban guns and ban black powder so that we can't fight them. Because if you don't have guns, you don't have anything. They can take away whatever they want. They can add acts, they can take taxes, they can do anything, and you have no options. You have no way to defend yourself, your property, nothing. And that leads to yourself. If you can't defend yourself, you can't defend yourself. And recently, we've had a lot of problems with school shootings. And this brings me to my next point of personal safety. And the safety of your peers, because if Justin has a gun and you start to shoot up the school, just because I don't have one doesn't mean I'm not safer, because he can kill you if you're trying to kill me. So California and a lot of other states are dealing with this the wrong way. They're using this as an opportunity to continue to take more guns and take those rights. But uh, in reality, it'd be a lot safer if you had those guns. When I was in New York, I actually had a scare with this. I, there was a kid who sat next to me, his name was Keanu, really quiet kid, every now and then he'd lash out. Like he'd get really mad over little things. And he comes into school and they smelled marijuana on him. And weed being illegal in New York, they checked his bag. In the bottom of his bag, they found a loaded Glock 19 with a round in the chamber. This kid just sits in the back next to me with his hood up, headphones in all day until he lashes out. Had he gotten mad that day, I might not be in front of you. Had I pissed him off somehow, like just some little thing, he would lash out. I might not be here. And I was scared for months coming to school, knowing, like looking around, I have no idea what the next threat could be. And the only option, if that had happened, is call 911 and wait for someone with a gun to get there. If there was a cop at the end of the hall, I still would have been screwed if he had gotten in. And the only reason they caught him is because they smelled weed. It had nothing to do with the bag. If he didn't smell like weed, he would have had the gun sitting next to me. They asked him what it was for, and he said it was to shoot another kid in the school because the kid had threatened his brother. So he brought the gun with intent to kill someone. 90% of, of shootings are done with illegal firearms. 90% would not have been stopped. 24 shootings in 2018. Two, sh two school shootings a month last year. And 90% of them will not be helped by this. If anything, they're hurt by it. Because I would have felt a lot safer if there was a teacher that I knew had a pump action skull eraser under his desk if he decided to shoot people. Not to mention, uh, criminals are rational. They're still humans. Humans are smart. They're still people. Rationally, if you were going to commit a violent crime, would you rather do it in a state where after firing three rounds, you're going to get killed? Or go to somewhere like New York, like Chicago, like California, where there's a good chance that they're unarmed? Versus you go somewhere like Tennessee or Alabama, when 52% of the population have a concealed carry permit of the adult population, you're not going to be able to do any of those things, because there's a good chance that they're able to protect themselves. And one night, I'm coming home. I'm in New York. Uh, I was 15 years old. I'm coming home with my father. It was late in the night. Uh, if anybody knows New York, it's, we were coming from Harlem, so it's not a great area. We were on like 95th Street, 
and there's this man walking towards us, and we're going past him. We're just looking to get on the train to get home. And once he's about as far away as the desk, he pulls out a knife. And he said, if you want to walk away, I want everything. I want your keys, your phone, your wallet, your shoes, everything. And my dad stops, and they just lock eyes. And he pulls me behind him, which is something I'm sure he expected, being that I was a kid. And he says, OK. And he reaches back for his wallet, and he pulls out a 9 millimeter and has it at the guy's head. And he said, if you want to walk away, you're going to put down the knife and go back the way you came. The guy paused, put down the knife, and left. Once he was around the corner, or once he was at the point where he could turn, he turned and left. My father and I were silent the whole way home. We finally get back to the house. And I said, how did you know? He was like, what do you mean? I was like, why did you have that gun? He had it tucked under in his pants. I was like, we went to the fair today. We went shopping. We didn't expect to be out this late. Why did you have that? And he said, I always have it. Despite the fact that it's illegal, if it's something like that's life or death, it's better to ask for forgiveness than permission. Five years in jail and a $10,000 fine. That's what he should have faced. For my father carrying that concealed weapon that he was not allowed to have, that he was not allowed to carry. Five years in jail and a $10,000 fine to keep himself and myself safe. I don't want to live in a state or a country that has those sorts of restrictions where somebody can come out with a knife and there's nothing you can do. Because that's what that man expected. And that's that deterrent. If we were in Tennessee, there's no way somebody would come up with a knife and point it at you. Because people would laugh in their face and pull the shotgun out of the bed of their truck. Because everyone's armed. Or at least enough people that people know that they can't get away with those sorts of things. So ultimately, I believe that we would be safer for so many reasons if everyone in this room, I believe everybody here is 18, was able to have a gun on them. Even if no one has a gun on them, the fact that you all could keeps us all safe. Thank you. So Justin, what do you got to say? Um, so good things. There's a good preview. Front of the is very solid. Uh, I, I was uh, I appreciate the verbal, nonverbal. It's always strong in your presentations. I feel so that was that was definitely there. Uh, I also felt like the concealed carry permit example is very very strong. Uh, the deterrent per permit, the deterrent point was very strong. Uh, as for negatives, I think there wasn't really a good hook. Um, for the first part of speech, there was a few moments where you had like, your hand on the podium, but you kind of stopped in there, which is solid. Uh, I think structurally, I feel like this debate became very modern. It became like a gun control debate. So I think if you had signed or picked points that or might have addressed more modern concerns, it would have been more convincing for me personally. And I think the only area that kind of faltered was that you kind of so it kind of goes with the structural part is that, uh, like for example, you said, oh, I'd be feel better if there were guns, like the teacher had like a Remington or whatever. But then that's another discussion entirely about the policy and the place of firearms for administrative individuals in schools. So that could have been a point that you could spoke on more extensively, because it's kind of a leap for me to go from, oh, we should have concealed carry permits, like, okay, well, also the professor should have like a Glock as well. So that was Damn straight. Like, a big <laughs> jump. Um, I think that a little more, Maybe I missed it, but a little more like credible sources and numbers could have been better. But overall, it was a very strong presentation. Yeah, I liked it. Cool. Thanks. It really made me think about, because like, I also agree, I think we should have 
at least be allowed to have concealed carry permits, but it's very impossible in California. So yeah. Even just getting You have to be like the deputy's son or something. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right. Well, as usual, I think you, you're, you get by a lot with the presentation because you have confidence when you speak, you're direct in the way you talk to the audience, you're fluent when you're speaking, so you've got that covered and that gives you a lot of leeway. I do think you need to develop your argument a little bit. I, if, I was, you know, if I was helping you with this argument beforehand, I'd say start with that story that you tell about your father taking care of you. That's your, good, that's your attention device, and that's the thing that talks about, and that helps focus what your argument's going to be on, because it's, you, know, you mentioned the idea of you know, a tyrannical government and you know, some other issues that are going on. Those are not really the reason that you're talking about this. Those are distractions. Your argument basically is that people should have a right to carry, and that places that have a right to carry, folks are safer. And that's why we need to change these laws so that places like California uh, people would be able to protect themselves more efficiently. That's the argument that you really are focusing on and that you need to be making. Start with the example that you've got, then tell us how, in truth, your father was, you know, sub could have been subject to all of these horrible penalties for defending himself and defending you against somebody who is willing to take your life for possessions. And that, in the city of New York and in the state of New York, is perceived as being a crime as opposed to what that guy did, which is probably a crime also, but boy, is it nearly as heavily uh, penalized and that sort of thing? Probably not. And, you know, get that emotional injustice built up a, a bit at the beginning of the speech. Then you've got to build the argument for uh, both concealed carry and maybe open carry. I don't know. I mean, some places it is open carry. Uh, you sound like you are more in favor of the concealed carry thing. Maybe there's not a significant difference between the two. But you do give the comparison to places like Tennessee or other places where everybody is uh, locked and loaded. And as a consequence, you say there's going to be less crime. I'm going, I'm waiting for it. Where's the data on this? I don't get any data. There's no, this is just an assumption that you're making that these kinds of things. You say, this thing would never have happened in you know Tennessee because they have no... You know, I'm afraid I'm not convinced with that. I, I'm, I'm sure that kind of crap happens in a lot of places where people... Does it happen less? There might be some way of proving that. And I know that there's research out there that talks about those kinds of things. Uh, street crime especially is uh, strongly affected by people's perception of whether or not the uh, victims are going to be potentially armed and able to defend themselves. And that's one of those things that there's, I, there's a, a lot of research on that. And... There's none of it is in your speech. It's all kind of an assumption based on this one experience, which is a good experience, but it's a it's a big thing to draw a generalization from that situation, yeah. you know, because you know, because let's face it, there might very well be an easy example that somebody's sitting there. Oh yeah, I heard about that guy who pulled a gun on somebody else and got stabbed to death before he could shoot anybody, <laughs> you know, because yeah. he you know he wasn't fast enough on the draw, or you know the other person was a deranged meth head who didn't realize how dangerous his life was in the hands because you know, he's mm -hmm. crazed and he just went ahead and attacked anyway. It's like, you know, those, there's always an answer there and that's why you need more data than just the singular examples. Yeah. That, that gets you started and I think that sets up your argument, but, um, you know, the content is, I think, a little bit problematic. And you start off being structured, you know, talking about those things, but once you get past that first point, nothing seems like it really follows a pattern or organization. It's just sort of stream of consciousness. And they're, they're interesting ideas, they're well told. I don't want to say it's an impromptu persuasive speech, but it feels a little bit more <sighs> informal, a little less content driven, and more, you've got ideas, and you're sharing those ideas, and, and you explain them well. I, I want it to be proven, too. Mm -hmm. I, want, I want, convince me. Yeah. I I, I'm, 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 you know, the emotional thing, I think everybody can kind of relate to. Mm -hmm. you know? But you got to sell the intellectual part too. Yeah. All right. I cited things in there, I just forgot to say.